Today we are making these drawstring Christmas sacks, but before I show you how we make them, let's see some bloopers. Oh, jolly good. Hey, me! I regret. So satisfying. I'm going to finish the video now, so I'm going to keep talking, okay? Oh my. No, we're not. Miss something. Oh, I'm a <laughs> Hi, crafty people, and Merry Christmas! Today I'm sharing with you how I made these Christmas sacks that I've made for each member of our family. They have two different types of fabric and a decorative ribbon to divide those two fabrics along with a drawstring so that you can put your presents securely so that they uh, uh, don't fall out. Each of us has a different Australian animal fabric picked out. Yeah, I so got that this. We... Which one do you have bud? Um, I've got a wombat <laughs> and a king noose. They didn't fit about like uh, not 99 or a thousand pounds. Wow. If this is your first time on my channel, then welcome. My name is Marie and this channel is all about the projects that I make for our home, my kids and myself. These are my four kids. So I have Elijah, Isabel, Alice and Reuben. If you're a beginner sewer, this is a great project for you. You're just using rectangles and mostly you could get away with just using a straight stitch on your sewing machine, a zigzag stitch if you have it. My Christmas sack. My Christmas sack. We are looking forward to sharing this tutorial with you, so I hope you enjoy it. And with all of that being said, let's get making. My mum made Christmas sack. sack. This is what the finished Christmas sacks are going to look like. We're going to need two different types of fabric and two different types of ribbon to make this design. The first thing we need to do is cut out our two different sorts of fabric. I've made these sacks to be about 42 centimeters wide, so I'm going to cut my fabric just larger than that. And the overall length of the sack is 55 centimeters divided between the two fabrics. I used my rotary blade and mat to cut out these pieces of fabric because it is easier when cutting out rectangles like this. I cut out my fabrics on the fold and I cut my main fabric piece to be 40 centimeters high by 43 centimeters wide. And then the red piece of fabric I cut out 25 centimeters high by the same 43 centimeters wide. If you don't have a rotary cutter and mat, that's okay. You can just cut them with scissors though. Then you'll have your two really wide rectangles like this, and I'm going to open them out so that I can pin them together. Where these two fabrics join is actually where I'm going to put that silver ribbon detail. So I'm actually going to pin these together with the wrong sides together, which will leave the sort of exposed edge of it on the front of the sack, which I will cover with the ribbon. That way the inside of the sack will look nice and neat and the front will be covered with the ribbon anyway, so it won't matter that the seam is on the front. So I'm lining up the top part of my main fabric piece with the second fabric here, again with the wrong sides together, and I'm going to pin along this long edge and then sew it on my sewing machine using a straight stitch. I moved over to my iron to do all the ironing steps at the same time. First, I ironed the seam allowance of the join we just made, ironed it down, and I ironed out any other patches on the fabric that needed to be smoothed out. Then, at the top of the Christmas sack, I have folded it over so that it is ready for me to sew down and put the drawstring in. So first, I folded the top of the Christmas sack over one centimeter and ironed it down, and then I folded that over again two and a half centimeters, or one inch, and ironed that down as well, which will create the casing where I'm going to put the ribbon for the drawstring. I choose not to pin those top parts that I ironed down, I just leave them flat until they've completely cooled and then the pressing that I have done usually stays in place well enough that I can just leave it until later. Next we're going to sew the decorative ribbon on top of this join that we made here on the two pieces of fabric. So to do that I'm going to pin this ribbon directly over the top of that ironed seam that we have just made and then I'm going to do a straight stitch along the top of the ribbon and another straight stitch along the bottom of the ribbon using a color of thread that matches pretty closely to the color of my ribbon. You can have your machine set to a fairly long straight stitch when you're sewing the ribbon on because it is just a decorative piece. The next step is we're going to take our big, now one big rectangle and fold it over on itself so the right sides are together. We're going to pin down this open side and bottom part so that we can sew them together. I'm going to use my over edge stitch because my fabric will fray and that will do a straight stitch with a zigzag stitch next to it which will help 
uh, to prevent that fraying. You could use your overlocker if you have one. You could just do a straight stitch and then do a zigzag stitch on the edge next to it. Or you could use pinking shears or just risk it and just do the straight stitch and hope it doesn't fray. We're not going to sew the side seam together at the very top here where our folds have been created. So where you can see the edge of your fabric is, you're just going to get a fabric marker and you're going to mark where that point is because we're not going to sew those sides together. They're going to be the open part where the string will come out when we are using our drawstring. You'll need to mark that on both sides and then we're going to pin our seams together. You're going to want to match your ribbons so that as you sew it, it'll look like the ribbon continuously go continuously goes around the sack without it being sort of uneven or lopsided. I should pin this on the table because this isn't going so well. So I first pinned where that ribbon is and then I'm going to pin down the side and bottom seams of the bag, remembering to not bother sewing above that little marking that we've made on the top there. Once I've pinned down those two sides of the bag, I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and as I said, I'm using an over edge stitch and I'm going to sew down those two sides of my bag. After sewing the sack together down the sides and the bottom, I used my pinking shears to cut around those seams, making sure not to cut my stitches. This just helps with the fraying, but if you don't have pinking shears, you can just leave that step off. The next thing that we're going to do is create some boxed corners so that the sack has a bit more dimension rather than it just being flat. So I'll show you what you need to do for that. To make these boxed corners, we're going to open out the bottom corner of our bag here and match these two seams together so that they're on top of each other. This will create a triangle shape like this in the bottom of our bag. We're going to want to sew a straight line across the triangle here, but I want to make sure that it is even where I am sewing that line. So I'm going to take my ruler and I want my line to be six centimeters. So I'm going to use the seam that is here and measure three centimeters above it and three centimeters below it. So I'm going to put my ruler on the three centimeter line and where the zero is should touch this side of the sack and where the six is should touch this side of the sack. Then I'm going to use my fabric marker to draw a line. This is the line we're going to then sew down and once it's sewn we can chop off any of the excess. We're going to do the same on both sides, but because there is no seam on this edge, I like to, while it's still flat, use my fabric marker to just mark where the edge is. And then when I open it out, I'm going to use that mark that I've just made to line that up with the seam. Make sure that you're pinning your little triangle in place as well so that it doesn't move before you sew it. We're going to do the same process as we did on the first side measuring oops we might want to do it on the seam side so measuring three centimeters above the seam and three centimeters below the seam we're going to take it over to our sewing machine and sew down those two lines we've created to make our boxed corners i'm using an over edge stitch and you can use whatever stitch you used to sew the rest of your christmas sack together it's really coming together now the next thing that we're going to do is the decorative stitching along the top here. So these stitches are going to be seen. So you're going to want to change to a color thread that matches the color of your fabric at the top here. The first thing we need to do is to hem these two sides here where the drawstring is going to be. So as you can see on the inside, our stitching stops here at this point and we need to hem the sides just from that point upwards. So I'm going to fold it over where the seam already is and just sew a straight stitch down there and the same on the other side. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a straight stitch to sew down one side and then along the base of that join there to sew back up the other side again so that both of the sides of my drawstring section are hemmed. So as you can see, I've hemmed both sides there and I ended up going back and forwards a little bit over this section because I thought it might need a bit of reinforcement. So now that we've completed the hem just here on that section where the drawstring will be, we're going to create this casing for the drawstring to go through. So we're going to fold over where we had ironed it before and just sew the whole way around the top of the bag there just along the open edge here to create that casing for the drawstring. You might want to pin it in place or you can just hold it carefully where you have ironed it. With the casing all sewn, I can turn my Christmas sack in the right way again. 
and I'm using a safety pin on my ribbon or you could use whatever it is that you're threading to use as your drawstring and we're going to thread that through the top casing that we've just created of our sack and when it comes out the other side we're going to knot the two ends together and chop off the excess to stop my ribbon from fraying, I like to use a match to heat up the ends of my ribbon, which will melt them a little bit so that they won't fray. Here is what the finished Christmas sack looks like. It has the lovely, neat drawstring casing, and also it uh, has the hidden seam where we have put the ribbon to hide this join here. It also has the boxed corners to give it some depth for when the presents are put in. So there you have it. Thanks for joining us as I made these Christmas sacks. If you have a go at making one of these yourself, I'd love to see a photo of it. You can tag me on Instagram if you share it over there. You're done. Right. If you'd like any of your projects shared on the channel here, don't forget to tag them with Show My Sew on Instagram or Facebook when you share them so that I know that I can share your project with us here on the channel. Today's Show My Sew is by Cindy from Cape Ivy and she has made some art smocks using the pattern that I have previously shared on my channel. So these are some pictures here of what she has made and also I will link down in the description box the uh, video where I made these art smocks if you would like to make some for yourself as well. I also wanted to mention yeah. though, Cindy has a non-for-profit that she works with um, called Cape Ivy and it says on their little bio, hospitals are cold. Cape Ivy donates bright, fuzzy, fleecy ponchos to hospital children with chronic illness because jackets, because jackets don't work with hospital lines. And when she showed me this, I was so touched by it. What a great idea. I had never realized that um, a jacket would be uncomfortable or not usable for a person that was stuck in a hospital bed. So if you are able to donate to this really worthwhile not-for-profit, I will link the Instagram and website down below for Cape Ivy in case you would like to check them out as well. If you've gotten to this part of the video, then I guess you have enjoyed it. So don't forget to press the like button down below and subscribe to come back to see some of my other videos. Only people don't like this video. If they don't like the video? Yeah. There's a dislike button. You can press that too if you want to. Should they yeah. do that? Not. They should always press the glue. <laughs> there Otherwise you go. You'll get in trouble. Oh, what type of trouble would they get in? They'll have to pay a thousand dollars. Wow. To you. You'll get a fine if you press the dislike button. Heard it here yes. first. I hope that you and your family have a very merry Christmas. And until next time, go get creative, and we'll see you later.